going on this is Rob Roy the plant-based prepper and I have not done a video in a long time let alone a garden update so today I'm going to do a garden update this is my lighter gardening system and everything's looking great finally the temperatures have reached over 80 degrees here in SoCal everything's green and healthy I did not have the bug problem that I did last spring I'm gonna start off by showing you my watering system that I changed out because at first I had it on a timer right here. This is a beehive timer. And you can schedule this. Uh, it's wireless and it hooks up to a hose. Uh, so I had it going off three times a day uh, for about four minutes a day, the morning, afternoon. But what I wanted to do was use my off-grid watering system there. Uh, I only have one 55 gallon drum for now. But this collects rainwater. Now I know it doesn't rain much in SoCal, but it has in the last three weeks. Uh, the weather's been very odd. So we did have rain. But the problem is, is that when it doesn't rain, I'd have to fill this up by hand and to keep it <laughs> filled so that I can continuously have water for my garden. Instead of doing it that way, I hooked up a float here. So inside this drum is a float that will automatically fill up this tank halfway. So the float goes to about here. And when it drains, it will automatically fill up. So it will keep it filled no matter what, at least halfway. And then when uh, this ball valve opens to water my garden, it will automatically fill up. So I don't have to worry about running out of water uh, at all. And then when it rains, it will fill it up all the way to the top. So then I'll at least gain free water all the way up to the top. Now, this is a small system, but the plan is to have 10 of these right here and with the same setup so that the extra nine tanks will automatically fill up through rainwater. And then if I run out of rain, it will switch to my on-grid watering system right here through my hose and my float. Now the way I did it, um, I did it several methods. First I had a, um, a timer on here with a battery operated system and that was unreliable so I switched it out to a solar system so I have a solar panel over there it comes over and it's automatically going on right now so it's good timing we can show you how it waters the garden now it takes about a minute to fill up the pipes so I have this on for five minutes that way you can fill up both pipes I have it going over to the middle so that it splits into both gardens and fills them up at the same time at first I had it over here but what will happen is this will get watered first and then it will fill up those pipes so I ran it to the middle with a T so that yeah both of them get watered at the same time it's up about uh, three feet three inches if you want to do it off-grid you can certainly water a 30-foot grow bed I know that for sure I don't know about uh, multiple because the water pressure you might need more water pressure maybe hook up a pump to it uh, let me show you how uh, I have this. All you do is uh, have a battery here, charge controller, and this timer right here. You can set this thing. There's 16 different on-off settings you can do. So that's 16 different schedules you can have for watering. I only have it set up for four. Four times a day, morning at 10 a.m., 2 a.m., and then at 6 p.m., and that's just in case it, it doesn't water it as much as the uh, system over there because it's gravity fed so that's why I have it four times and I just uh, rigged this up so I can plug in the uh, solar panel from right here and then that will charge the battery and then over here this goes over to my electronic ball valve now you need a ball valve that opens and closes. you cannot have something that inhibits the pressure the water pressure you have to have a ball valve that opens up so that you get as much pressure as possible from a gravity fed system so check it out i don't know if you can see it but it is coming out all of the holes the only problem i had this spring with my garden was the fertilizer so right here you can see 
uh, at first I thought it was a nutrient deficiency, but it wasn't. It was fertilizer burn. So this was one of the true leaves. It was lower to the ground. I put fertilizer on it and it uh, burned it first and now it's died off. Uh, it happened to many of these. And when I went back through, I saw fertilizer on the leaves. So over here, the uh, potato plants, you can see the lower leaves. Some of them have fertilizer burn. I'll have to go on the other side and show you. But everything's looking great. Look at my carrots. This, <laughs> some uh, tomato plants were volunteer, so I let them grow. I'm not going to pull them out because these are healthy. And if I have a problem like over here, with this tomato plant, which is having a hard time growing, I'm just gonna transplant the ones that were volunteer over here so that I can have healthy tomato plants. As you can see, things got off to a slow start with some of them. Uh, the the uh, Rutgers right there took off, and uh, that one looks really strong. That one looks kinda weak, but here's another volunteer tomato plant. I can just transplant that over there, and I have extra. Cucumbers never sprouted, maybe because it's not hot enough. But uh, I labeled everything with these flags I ordered. Uh, that's squash. And then we've got Black Beauty squash right here. Cocozelle, I've never had one of these, so we're going to try it for the first time. And then we've got, um, I think we've got cauliflower and broccoli over here on both of these and then all of my bush beans so they're looking really healthy they're actually starting to flower right now and then over here we've got some nice green lettuce uh, some kale a rabbit I caught a rabbit in my garden not too long ago they devoured the spinach so and they they <laughs> chewed up a lot of the kale this came back the spinach didn't so I just threw some more seeds down there and then we've got arugula. This one's looking good. This one actually went to seed already. I don't know why. Um, I'm thinking because when I transplanted these from my seedling trays, I threw a little bit of nitrogen in each hole because I heard that that helps with the transplant shock so that um, it'll be better for the plant, but made it bolt a lot sooner. So that might have been the reason. I've got some basil right here. The other one did not make it, um, so I'll just throw another seed down there. And then this did not sprout, or actually it did. We've got some right there barely coming up. Like I said, some of these are not sprouting because it's been odd weather here in SoCal. It's, <laughs> for some reason, it's been cold. It's been off and on, but now I think it's in the 80s and I think it's gonna stay that way. And then this is all peppermint. Um, the seeds are really small, so it's hard to get just one seed in the ground. So look at how many came up uh, Over here. We've got sweet peppers barely started sprouting over there and over there and you can see What I had to do with my potato plants. I had to string them up because they were crowding my uh, peppers uh, They're they're blocking the Sun So I tried to pull them up as much as I can but I think next time <laughs> I am not going to plant potatoes in my garden because they just block everything. They grow faster than everything else. The peppers are going to suffer because of it because they're not getting as much sun. But they are finally coming up because it's sunnier now. Let's see that one right there. Totally blocked by the potatoes. So what I probably should have done is put all the potatoes down there on both sides of the garden and then had this half with peppers and uh, lettuce. So next time I'll do that, I won't plant uh, both sides of this grow bed with different crops. I'll just put potatoes on both sides because uh, that way I'll have half of the garden uncovered for everything else. Now, I wasn't sure if everything was going to grow and survive uh, because last spring I had earwig problem, roly polies. A bunch of insects problems but what I used was sluggo plus uh, towards the end of the year and that took care of those problems so what I've been doing is putting sluggo plus down in my garden and it also dissolves into a nutrient that's good for the plants but when the bugs eat it it's a poison to them it will kill them so it's safe for your plants look it up 
I've been doing that and I have not found an earwig in this garden uh, this year so far. So it is working, I can guarantee you, because that's all I had problem with last spring. Um, but because I wasn't sure uh, if everything was going to survive, I started some ceilings outdoors and they're looking pretty good. I have a spreadsheet that tells me what each is, but right now I could just show you whatever sprouted out here. Um, I'm either going to use transplant or I think for summer is make a new garden outside. I have an acre of land and I'm going to grow this garden. I'm going to expand it. So we'll see about that. But these are all tomatoes. This tray right here I think is all tomatoes. And I've got a lot of those sprouting. I forgot what these are. But this looks like corn in this row. And then some type of cucumber or squash right here. So we'll see what they are. I have a spreadsheet that tells me what they are. So I'll go in and look at it. And when it's time to transplant, put those in my new garden. Or like this one over here, the cucumber never came up. So I'll just transplant one right there. I have this one I'll transplant. And then um, I have backup right here. Anyway, that's it for now. Uh, it's a quick update. I haven't done an update in a while and everything is really looking healthy. Uh, look at this transplant right here. It's not even getting watered by my, my pipe right here, my sprinkler system. So somehow it's growing in this cinder block without getting watered from here. All right, that's it for now. Until uh, next time, stay healthy, stay safe, and just keep prepping.